Okay, thank you for joining us, everybody. Our continuing uh, Tomcat track will continue here with John Frederick Clare presenting Tomcat from a cluster to a cloud. Thank you, John Frederick. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's start. Um, so um, I will be looking basically uh, uh, how to uh, put Tomcat in a cloud, uh, basically moving uh, from a cluster uh, to a session, uh, to a cloud, uh, handling a bit the uh, session replication and uh, how we can do that. Uh, and uh, we'll, actually there's two kind of replication which have been implemented in the cloud, the QB ping and the DNS ping. I have a demo. I have. Um, I haven't going to show some stuff uh, about the operator, and I have room for questions. So, uh, uh, in case you have a question, I will uh, pose from time to time so that you have a chance to ask. Um, so, uh, I'm working for Red Hat. I've been uh, writing code for a long, long time, and I'm living in Switzerland. So uh, uh, let's jump now. Uh, basically, a Tomcat cluster is going to be something like what is here on the slide. Uh, you you have a piece uh, of hardware which is getting uh, the internet connection, uh, usually going to a load balancer. Uh, it could be a hardware load balancer, or it could be a HTTPD or any uh, proxy. Uh, uh, this proxy is going to be connected to all the Tomcat, uh, being able to uh, forward it uh, request and uh, read uh, responses and forward them uh, to um, the browser and or clients which are located on the top. Uh, the Tomcat nodes are communi have to communicate together uh, to be able to exchange the uh, session information. So uh, um, actually, uh, when you run Tomcat in a cluster, uh, it usually uh, we have to take care of the session replication in Tomcat uh, because basically uh, HTTP 1.1 have uh, no transaction and uh, it is not supposed to be a completely persistent uh, connection. Um, it's more more or less the case, but uh, normally uh, HTTP 1.1 uh, uh, is not persistent. So you use a, you're going in, on a web app, uh, you're going to use a cookie to carry some session ID. And uh, in the session, I mean, in the Tomcat, uh, you're going to store uh, information uh, uh, corresponding to the uh, session ID. For example, you're going to store the shopping cart. Uh, uh, usually uh, when you run in a, in a cluster, the cluster is going to be a multi-node and is going to be dynamic. Uh, the routing uh, basically needs uh, to do, go to the to the right node because you don't want to uh, spend your time exchanging uh, session information uh, between the nodes, and uh, the nodes have to replicate uh, the information. Uh, usually, you replicate the information to the next node, uh, but you can replicate to all the nodes or uh, any kind of this uh, middle configuration uh, you can imagine. So we do a session replication uh, for a cluster. Uh, basically, uh, uh, in uh, server.xml, uh, you're going to tell that you want to use the simple uh, TCP cluster. That's the most easy to do. Uh, in fact, it does a little more uh, than this line. It's going to do something like it. it's going to uh, uh, use the simple uh, TCP cluster. Uh, it's also going to uh, create a channel and it's going uh, to create a membership. And in this case, uh, in the case of a cluster, the membership usually is a multicast service. Basically, it's going to use a multicast address and a port to, the key, to discover. So one Tomcat is going to use um, the uh, multicast address and port 
uh, to discover the other running Tomcat in the cluster. So if you move that to the cloud, uh, you you really have to have the same kind of problem. Uh, you have to move the load balancer, uh, which is basically going to be uh, handled uh, by uh, by the cloud, and uh, you will have instead the Tomcat instance running uh, in a box. You will have Tomcat instance running in a node. And those Tomcat instance uh, are in in uh, uh, in the cloud, and they need to communicate to each other. Basically, we have a big problem with the cloud. Uh, there's uh, uh, no multicast, and uh, we have pods instead machine. Well, that's not really a problem. A pod is kind of like a, uh, a containerized uh, Linux uh, or Windows uh, running the Tomcat, so that's not a big issue. Another problem we have is that the load balancer depends on the cloud infrastructure, uh, which means uh, you, you'll have to learn uh, how to uh, set up a load balancer uh, in order to be able to use it uh, on your cloud. So let's look first for the first problem we have to solve uh, is basically uh, solving the uh, uh, Tomcat uh, session uh, uh, sharing um, between the Tomcat. So, um, in the case of multicast, uh, the multicast port and IP is used uh, to discover the other Tomcat. And then the Tomcat are going to uh, replicate uh, the session data between each other. In case we are in the cloud, uh, we, we will have to have, to, uh, we have at least two ways to find out uh, who are, are the Tomcat. The first, the first, easy one uh, is to use the Kubernetes API in order to find uh, the other Tomcat. Uh, basically, the Tomcat will have to find uh, the other Tomcat. And then once they find the other Tomcat, they will have the IP address. And they can then use uh, TCP uh, to exchange uh, the session data. So how is this going to work? Uh, this is the uh, QB ping. Uh, way of doing the things. Uh, basically, in a in a pod, uh, you can access to some Kubernetes information. Basically, you make something like a get uh, request to the uh, Kubernetes API and ask for all, all the uh, uh, all the pods that are in the Tomcat in the cloud uh, namespace here in this example. And uh, Kubernetes is going to reply. Uh, uh, by a, a large uh, a piece of information. And we are interesting uh, in the name we filter. This is the name of the pod. Uh, and uh, we want the one that are running. And we have the pod IP. The pod IP is quite interesting because the pod IP are accessible uh, within the cluster. In fact, they are accessible within the namespace. Uh, so basically, the Tomcat is going, one Tomcat running there is going to be able to access to the other Tomcat based on this. Another solution, uh, instead using the multicast, so this is again uh, on the uh, left uh, side, you have again the, uh, close, the uh, uh, cluster uh, solution. And on the uh, right side, uh, you have the cloud solution. The cloud solution uh, using the DNS lookup, uh, Basically, in fact, uh, we uh, in the cloud, you create a service, and this service can be uh, queried uh, uh, using, uh, yeah, in this example, the namespace, but you could use the name of the service and query for it. And uh, it, this query, like uh, an inner get all by name, uh, will return, uh, it's like an lookup, it will return uh, the uh, IP address of all the Tomcats that are uh, up and running in uh, that namespace. So basically, the, each Tomcat can uh, then know uh, the IP address uh, directly of the other Tomcat, and it could use uh, the standard uh, session distribution mechanism 
uh, to exchange the session information. So basically, this is a NS lookup. Uh, here in this example, I say NS lookup namespace, but in fact, it's a NS lookup the service. Uh, this is an example uh, using uh, uh, OpenShift, but the same uh, works uh, uh, using uh, plain Kubernetes. Basically, uh, uh, you can uh, SSH to the node, and then if you make a lookup uh, uh, using uh, the um, uh, the service name, then you're going to have all uh, the Tomcat that uh, are running. You get the name uh, and uh, the IP address. You notice that the name of the service, so they're the same. And here in this example, uh, the, the this is running in the Tomcat demo namespace with the uh, uh, Tomcat demo application. It's just a detail, but that's a kind of like a thing you can read from this information. Uh, of course, uh, if you connect to your pod, um, and if you want to make an NS lookup inside the pod, uh, yeah, yeah, the uh, the container which is running Tomcat uh, must have NS lookup because if you make NS lookup on something that does not have uh, NS lookup, you're not going to be able to to do that. But if you have Java, uh, you can uh, get the init ad you will get uh, the init address. Get by, by get all by name, then you will have all the names. So how you configure this? Uh, so this is a, a cloud configuration example. Um, uh, basically, you're going to use um, again the uh, uh, standard uh, TCP uh, cluster. Uh, you're going to use the group, and uh, you're going uh, to tell that in the membership. Uh, uh, you're going to use, for example, here, yeah, uh, the DNS membership thingy. In case you you, you want to use the QB ping, uh, you'll have to use the Kubernetes memberships uh, provider. And uh, it um, the the QB, the, the QB ping is a bit more complex to uh, configure, uh, but it's a little more reliable because DNS. Uh, is not completely reliable because it might uh, return you that uh, pod is up while it's not up. Well, usually it's the contrary, like the pod is going to be up for a while and then uh, it's going to appear in the DNS entries. This is due to the way um, Kubernetes is done and this is also uh, due to the DNS uh, uh, logic. Um, so um, basically, uh, you can configure your uh, your your things uh, quite easily. Uh, not that you probably need a check valve uh, in this case, because Kubernetes is uh, going to be able uh, to tell you uh, if your uh, uh, if your Tomcat is up when the Tomcat is really up. Uh, so for this, uh, you have to define the L check and uh, to use the L check, uh, the best is to use the L check valve. It has been created for that uh, purpose. Um, so, um, if you would connect to uh, if you would connect to a running uh, pod, uh, you can read a bunch of information there. Uh, this information, uh, the namespace, is going to allow you uh, to access to the uh, uh, to all the information that is need is needed uh, to um, uh, to find the information the QB ping is going to need. Uh, it has a namespace, which is an important piece for you, and uh, it also has uh, information in uh, in some files, which are at a defined location. And then in this defined location, you're able to read it. For example, uh, this is an example of a connection to a pig, uh, to a pod which is running. Um, as this is uh, a Tomcat pod. Uh, running and from this Tom camp pod, uh, you can read. Uh, so th this is an old uh, running thing. So uh, none of this information is uh, <laughs> is something private nowadays. Uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, Kubernetes is storing uh, the keys and the certificate and uh, uh, different information so that it can from a pod you can access. Uh, to uh, the um, uh, other pods 
and to the Kubernetes information. So um, I'm going to sh to, uh, to make a kind of a demo. Uh, basically, um, I have already prepared the things. Um, um, I have uh, created my namespace. Um, I have uh, deployed my uh, I have deployed my uh, Tomcat instances, and uh, I can show uh, uh, different things on it. So um, I'm remotely connected to uh, uh, my uh, control plane uh, Kubernetes, and I can uh, do different things there. I can uh, look to the nodes, so I have a bunch of nodes uh, running. No nodes there are really uh, boxes. Uh, so basically, I have three boxes running in my office. Uh, one uh, is the control plane, and the two other are some um, uh, boxes which have a normal uh, a normal node uh, which are going to be able to accept pods. So I already started the Tomcat uh, there. So I have a bunch of pod runnings. I have created the uh, uh, the services um, and uh, basically uh, um, I can uh, I um, I have a load balancer service created. Uh, the load balancer is going to be able to allow the uh, um, uh, the um, uh, the control plane node. Uh, to, uh, dis uh, to distribute the load uh, between the different um, um, uh, the different Tomcat pods that are running there. Uh, you can see that definitively you have uh, something important. Uh, you have um, uh, two worker nodes which are able to get the load and uh, you have uh, three pods running. Uh, actually, this, if I would start more uh, Tomcat, uh, uh, they would uh, go uh, kind of like um, Kubernetes is going to be a kind of a load balancing between the nodes to make sure that uh, they are not overloaded. So if I would start another one, probably two are running on one uh, of my box and the other one is running on one. If I would start four, then the fourth one will be on the other node. So what is interesting is like basically uh, my control plane uh, has created a load, balance, a load balancer running on this port and I can access to it um, quite easily. So uh, I've prepared it. I hope I didn't miss the copy past. No, it's the right one. So basically I have a counter. I, it's, a, it's, an, it's a very simple web app, which is a, a kind of counting. And every time I'm renewing the, the counter is increasing by uh, one and uh, it kind of, or should uh, move from one node to the other actually uh, I didn't check carefully, so it seems it's kind of a sticky. A Kubernetes tend to be sticky. Well, at some point, if you try enough, it's going to move to another node. Well, it does not seem to be willing for the moment, but can let it uh, wait for a while. And uh, okay, it's normally it's doing the load, it's doing the load balancing, and the counter is uh, like counting in a reasonable manner. Okay, it does not want to change, change the node, but anyway. Uh, so you can see that it is uh, uh, Kubernetes, like the routing of Kubernetes is kind of clever and makes sure that he's trying to keep the same node. And I started that stuff a while ago because this is uh, taking some time. Okay. Um, I'm going to exit uh, the presentation and if there's any question and then I can jump in some uh, more detailed stuff. Does not seem to be any question for the moment. Okay, so I'm going to move on. Um, so, um, so here is the demo. I did it uh, some time ago, and uh, in my tries in the past, I was able to uh, get the node changing. And this is 
just a kind of like try enough and you get it. Uh, another thing in order that uh, another thing in order uh, to make your life more easy if you want to try it, uh, you might not be uh, able to build a cloud using uh, three old boxes. Uh, uh, this is quite time consuming. Uh, the instructions uh, how to do it uh, 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 in my GitHub. Uh, I have also spent some time creating some Katakoda demos. Uh, which are here. So here the Katakota demo. And uh, so if if you want if you you can you can use them. Uh, actually at that time of the of the day Katakoda is quite slow so uh, the demo um, might work or might not work. Uh, so basically, basically, yeah, what it do it install a bunch of package that I need uh, to have enough stuff uh, uh, in uh, in my um, control plane in order to be able to uh, to run the demo. Uh, I'm going to go through the steps, uh, basically explaining uh, what I'm doing. So I have a simple. Uh, this are you can run it uh, once I'm done because of, if you do it now, it might derail a bit. Uh, so basically, I just clone my uh, repository, uh, create my, uh, uh, build my application, uh, login uh, to Quay, where I have put my Tomcat demo, and push uh, my demo uh, to the to the Tomcat. Um, I've, um, in order to uh, to make the stuff a little more easy, uh, we also have created an operator. An operator is a kind of tool which is going to automa automate some of the things. So if you look to if if you look to uh, the pod I'm running, uh, this is uh, the operator, and the operator basically is going to allow me to make uh, uh, easy changes, uh, like changing. Uh, my images uh, without uh, spending too much time on it. So here you have the explanation how to install the operator, how to create all the stuff. Uh, I already uh, did push the operator, as you can see. Uh, the image are available. Uh, you can use it. Uh, you can use them when you want. Uh, so uh, once the cluster is started, in my case, I, it is still starting, but uh, now I scan Oh, it says the get node, so it's a, a kind of like it is running. So uh, I could do uh, some of the things uh, like um, I, I've been going forward in order to go a bit faster. Check out. So okay, then uh, I would I would log in, then push the images and. Uh, I do this time. This is this would take a lot of time. I already did it. Oops. And so I would clone uh, uh, my operator image. Uh, I can compile it, which I won't do. Uh, I can configure it. Uh, so I. Uh, if you um, if you go to the path and if you go to deploy, um, you have the different elements that are used to the uh, uh, to deploy the operator. Uh, this I already done in my uh, own uh, things, but I can uh, uh, e easily uh, do it here. Something like uh, this command, and I have uh, this is the image I already have. So. And I guess I need uh, to. So uh, normally here uh, on Katakoda, uh, I have the command prepared. So I have the operator that is started. You can see. If I go back to uh, my demo web app, 
I can I can install the uh, the, the Tomcat pods. So we have, if I make again um, the get pods uh, is going to this is going to take a while in Katakura. Uh, it's hard to tell the time it's going to do. Uh, so here the operator have been creating the service so a bunch of services. I'm going uh, to expose it. Yeah. So uh, at some point the pods are going to be ready. Um, if I didn't miss anything, they're going to be ready at some point. Well. Okay, there might be something going wrong. So in Kubernetes, you can, it might tell us, well, it says it is happy. Okay, there's uh, one is running, uh, but it's not yet ready. At some point, they're going to be ready. Um, So I have prepared some command in order to uh, basically uh, to be able to uh, uh, to find easily uh, where the stuff is running. Um, oh, I have to run the. So I'm going to get the port. Oh, this is the local one. Mm. Okay, I have the port and. So this is the port where it's uh, running. And I should be able to open the link if I'm not missing it. No, uh, still on page. I want to open it in another tab. So I will disconnect myself and everything will break. Open in a new tab, and and it's uh, not yet ready for some reason. Uh, it should be ready. It should be ready. Well, something is not working. That's. Demo effect. <laughs> uh, to be the right service. Trust me, it worked last time. No, it's definitively, I must have screwed something. <laughs> yeah, it is pending, but it pens quite too much. At some point, it would be running. Okay, um, the demo are ready. You can play them uh, if you want. Um, I have a bunch of other demo. I'm going to run to show it on my own uh, cloud, but uh, I can show next. Um, so um, I'm sure that on my own cloud, it's going to work. Um, so I'm going to go back to my uh, demo uh, web app. And uh, imagine you, I want to change the image. Uh, this is the next part of the, uh, of the demo. Uh, basically here, I'm getting an application image, which I have prepared and uh, I have another one, which is uh, 2000, 
22. Uh, this this is to to show I'm making a a change. Uh, this is the wrong one. This is this one, and I'm going to use the other image, which I'm supposed to be. I have pushed the demo. I pushed it before in order to present prevent problems, and can show it's already there. Um, so I was pushing it some days ago, um, and uh, if now. Um, I'm uh, applying the resource again. So it's, um, so basically, the operator is going to deploy those new images. If I uh, look to the pod, the old pods are terminating. Uh, if I'm trying to access on my box, I should have uh, an answer, and they're going to be restarted. It's also taking a while. Should be faster there. Should be. Uh, no, the rolling update for the moment is not supporting. Uh, supported. You have to do it by hand. Uh, the thing is, like, uh, uh, basically, you would have to, what you would like, I think what you mean by rolling update is by you push an image somewhere in a repository and you want to get it deployed. Uh, to get this is uh, depend a lot on the, uh, on the, on the cloud you're using. Uh, you would have to, to have to create a service, uh, basically create a sp dedicated pod, uh, which will listen uh, or receive uh, a post. Uh, typically, this is what uh, uh, GitHub is doing. You, if you look uh, in GitHub, you can. Uh, if you look in a repository, you can uh, get uh, GitHub pushing, uh, posting something. Uh, so you post it uh, to uh, uh, this dedicated pod, and this dedicated pod is going to tell uh, the operator that it need to redeploy. And this can be done in the operator itself, but it's not implemented for the moment. And as you can see now, the uh, the new application are in process being uh, redeployed. And it is running. So if I go back to um, uh, my, uh, oh, that's not the right one. That's this one. So uh, this is the old one. Uh, and if I redo it, H 2022, uh, which is what I was doing. And uh, I think uh, I have screwed enough my demo uh, and I'm ready for questions. If there's any. It always takes me a bit to get back in here. Other than Felix's question, I don't see any. If there are any attendees who would like to ask Sean Frederick a question, please go ahead and post them in the chat or in the Q&A. And also feel free to uh, to try the demo. Uh, if they are not doing what you expect, uh, complain. I'll, in some case, I can I will fix them and uh, yeah, definitively, I must have uh, uh, gone a bit too fast and jump over. Can you copy and paste the demo URL into the chat? That uh, might make it easier. Um, like the Katagoda one, no? Or the one that goes directly to your running demo, or is that not publicly available? Uh, it's not publicly available for the moment. OK. I could make another demo and make it public. And then if someone is interested, uh, it's basically kind of like, uh, you, you need several nodes to do that. And I have, I'm running them in my office in Red Hat Lab. So normally, uh, I would have to move uh, those boxes uh, to my home, and they're noisy. 
But try the Katakoda stuff, uh, definitively. Uh, if one of the example is not working, uh, just just ask for it. Uh, I have a bunch of scenarios, uh, and I've tried to cover uh, most of the of the cases. I've updated uh, my demo to use the latest uh, Kubernetes available on Katakoda, uh, and. Uh, uh, what else to say? Like, um, I can, I've not mentioned one thing. Um, you basically, when you build a Katakoda uh, uh, cloud, you have you put a network on top of the Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes does not uh, is, uh, help you to create the node, but those nodes are not connected together. So, you have to create a, a, a network on top uh, of Kubernetes in order that the nodes are. Uh, are uh, communicating together. Uh, see, basically, this is um, um, in. I, uh, if you look to the scripts uh, I have, um, like the script uh, I in my GitHub repo. This is maybe what you were asking. So here I have tons of stuff, but I have the intro Katakoda, which in, is connect is con containing um, the uh, images and I, maybe I should make it and there you have uh, 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 all the the way you do the katakoda stuff so uh, uh, here you have the building uh, thingy and uh, I'm going to make it a little bigger I think I have some space and a few seconds more no it's the other button Okay, so basically, uh, uh, this is what I was speaking about the network. Uh, you that command is creating uh, the um, uh, the network. Uh, uh, Kubernetes is going to use uh, to get the node communicating together. If you don't do that, uh, basically, uh, the nodes are going to be created by Kubernetes, but they are not going to communicate uh, neither with the control plane neither together. I guess uh, that's all I have, except you have some more questions. I guess not. Thank you very much, Sean Frederic. Uh, coming you. up in 10 minutes, the Tomcat track, uh, Roni Flatcher will be presenting Apache Tomcat enabling scripting languages in JSPs. So please join us for that in a few minutes. Have a nice break. <laughs>